Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in San Luis Obispo, California. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, St. Stephen's welcomes you. Today during morning prayer, we are remembering Henry Melchior Mullenberg. Henry Melchior, Melchior Mullenberg is regarded as a, the patriarch of Lutheranism in North America. Mullenberg, born near Hanover, Germany in 1711, received his education at Göttingen and Halle before immigrating to the American colonies in 1742. Lutherans came to the colonies from a variety of regional and ethnic backgrounds and tended to build churches wherever they settled, sometimes with Lutherans of different origin, settling in closer proximity to each other. There was little organization among these dis disparate groups until the arrival of Muhlenberg. Upon his arrival, Muhlenberg visited Lutherans in coastal Carolina and Georgia before making his way to Philadelphia. With enormous energy and unflagging patience, Muhlenberg began to call together the Lutherans, first the Germans, then the Swedes, until the formation of the First Lutheran Synod in America in 1748, the Ministerium of Pennsylvania. At the inaugural synod, Muhlenberg offered a common liturgy for use among Lutherans. The liturgy was adopted and became the essential element in unifying the Lutherans in America for several generations. Muhlenberg's axiom, One Book, One Church, has been a benchmark for liturgical revision among North American Lutherans to the present day. Muhlenberg also recognized the pastoral challenges of organizing a new church in the New World. In the old, not the New World, but um, you know, it was here before it was found by you know the Europeans. In the old countries, which um, you know, again, Europe, uh, the church was closely allied with the state. Taxes to support the churches were collected by the state, and Christian education was part of the curriculum in every school. In the colonies, the churches were to be voluntary, self-supporting associations, and education in matters of Christian faith was to be the concern of church and home. Muhlenberg's family played prominent roles in the birth of the new nation. One of his sons served as a brigadier general in the revolution, while another was a member of the Con Continental Congress and later the first speaker of the House of Representatives. His great-grandson, William Augustus Muhlenberg, was a priest who shaped the Episcopal Church in the mid-19th century. He was remembered on April 8th. Henry Mel Mel Melchior Muhlenberg died on October 7, 1787. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Invitatory Psalm 67, verses 1 to 5. O God, be merciful to us and save us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The psalm set for today is on page 754 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 111, on page 754 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say Psalm 111 together. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. 
in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord, they are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the powers of his works in giving them the land of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice, and his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look round. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together, Ken will see a, so a song of Hannah. My heart exults in you, O God. My triumph song is lifted in you. My mouth derides my enemies, for I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like you, nor any rock to be compared to you, our God. Do not heap up prideful words or speak in arrogance. Only God is knowing and weighs all actions. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the weak are clothed in strength. Those once full now labor for bread. Those who hungered now are well fed. The childless woman has borne sevenfold, while the mother of many is forlorn. God destroys and brings to light, casts down and raises up, gives wealth or takes it away, humbles and dignifies. God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the rulers and inherit a place of honor. For the pillars of the earth are God's, on which the whole earth is founded. Our second reading is Matthew 18, 15 to 20. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you and you have regained that one, but if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. For the reflection, I have an excerpt from the journals of Henry Melchior Mullenberg, 1777, submitted by the Reverend Judith A. Meyer, historian, to the Historical Society of Truffe, Truffe Collegeville, Perpioman Valley. The Christian ministry has a number of, this is the voice of Judith Meyer, 
The Christian ministry has a number of occupational hazards, some of which are particularly threatening during the winter. I personally can attest to, to that this winter, as an ice storm allows me to stay at home this morning to prepare this column and nurse a bad cold. Old Father Mullenberg certainly wasn't immune to those challenges. In fact, they could be absolutely life-threatening. One big difference, he didn't benefit from modern science and technology. He didn't reach for the hand gel before breaking the communion bread. He didn't smile approvingly as the children coughed and sneezed into the bend of their elbows. He didn't rush to wash his hands after shaking hands with his congregation. He didn't put his four-wheel drive into gear to get through the snow banks or across the swollen creek. Let him describe one especially rough spell in early 1777. So these next words are from the journal of Mullenberg. January 28th. In the morning, our children and relatives set out on their return journey to Philadelphia. Mr. Coots, his wife, their three-month-old child, my youngest daughter, Salome, drove off in a stagecoach, and Mr. Hall and his wife, Hen Henrik Mullenberg's parents-in-law, drove away in a, cha in a chaise. The roads were very bad for driving. Friedrich Mullenberg is their driver. Those of us who know, who now remain here, are, uh, are we two oldsters, Henrik, Heinrich Mullenberg's wife and child, Friedrich Mullenberg, his wife, and their children. January 29th, I was ill, took some medicine, and wrote. January 31st, am severely afflicted with cataral fever. I have not had it for a long time, and it worries me especially because I have promised to preach in New Hanover next Sunday and have no voice left. Fortunately, Friedrich Mullenberg came back in the evening from Philadelphia with the stagecoach. They had an uncommonly difficult journey to Philadelphia on Tuesday. They were stuck in the mud twice, finally had to proceed on foot, and did not reach the city until 10 o'clock in the evening. February 2nd, Candle Mass. Friedrich Mullenberg rode to New Hanover over unusually bad roads in the wet weather in order to conduct divine service there. I was unable to go because I am still suffering severely from catarrhal fever and cannot speak. He visited Mr. Voigt after the service and dined with him. He returned safely in the rain, spattered with mud from head to foot. His horse fell under him only once, uninjured, thank God. February 4th, 5th. I am plagued with catarrhal fever and hectic cough. February 8th, my catarrhal condition continues, yet I have progressed so far that I can write and read somewhat and can force some sounds to make myself heard. My son Friedrich rode to the other side of the Skolkiel today in order to conduct divine service in Peakstown tomorrow. The roads are muddy, the water is high, and to make matters worse, it's raining today. In the morning I rode, a neighbor lent me a horse in order of February 9th. In the morning I rode, a neighbor lent me a horse in order that I might ride, the half mile from our house to Augustus Church, for I was unable, did not venture, to go so far afoot on account of my weakness and the bad condition of the road. After the service I prepared to set out for home. In spite of the help which the deacons and elders rendered in getting me onto the horse, the stirrup broke unexpectedly. Uh, and I fell down on my side. As a result, I injured, bruised, the short ribs on my left side and caused, and this caused severe pain. Toward the evening, Friedrich Mullenberg returned home safely. The school kill was so high that the water reached the saddle of his tall horse. February 14th, during the past night, almost a foot of snow fell. Today it is melting again and the roads are more impassable than ever. February 11th, I am still suffering from, I don't know why they're out of order, uh, I am still suffering from catarrhal fever. My masa fluid is losing a little fire salt, which still remained and is being transformed into phlegm, which will disappear naturally, leave behind a cup of mortem, and in the next month of March, i.e. in the equioctial season. February 14th. More than a foot of snow has already fallen since last evening, and the snow con it is continuing to snow. The weather is severe for the poor fellows in the army camps. February 16th. I am still suffering from catarrhal fever. Friedrich Mullenberg rode to New Hanover over very bad roads to conduct the divine service there, and to present to the congregation the new deacons Johannes Reichard and Matthias Wortmann. 
who had been elected in the congregational meeting on January 20th. He returned for the evening. Owing to my Kataro fever, which is holding on, I cannot even sing and pray with my family at home. February 20th, restored to my old remedy and an, an emecticum in order to try to break up the viscidity and the matzo fluid. February 24th, from early this morning until late at night, we had an extraordinary snow snowstorm. Perhaps as much as two feet of snow fell. March 1st, the snow which fell before has not disappeared, and today a heavy snowfall has been added. March 2nd, my neighbor, Mr. Mueller, was so good as to take me in his sleigh to Augustus Church, and my voice was sufficiently recovered to enable me to preach, after a fashion, on the example of the Ethiopian Chamberlain. Acts 8. March 9th, I conducted domestic devotions, but I am still unable to sing on account of my Qatar. Qatar. I don't know what the word is. C-A-T-A-R-R-H. March 11th, all kinds of petitions for the sick. Had all sorts of English and German visitors who sought help for the sick, for there are no practitioners in the art of conjecture in this whole region, inasmuch as they have gone to the military hospitals. I cannot help them because the Halle medicine is exhausted. What there is left of is so expensive that poor people cannot afford it. As long as the Halle medicines lasted, I used them accordingly to the accompanying printed directions. But since I must do without these medicines on account of the closed doors, importation ban because of the war, I give people who ask for it counsel from the blessed Dr. Johann Samuel Karl's ap apothecary and Dr. Tisor's house Azene Bush, and I show them the remedies which the great benefactors causes to grow on their, on their land or before their doors without payments or interest. Perhaps the physicians will soon return and I will be relieved of this burden. Father Mullenberg's words and experiences. Father Mullenberg's words and experiences are humbling indeed. Those were the last, that last sentence by, um, by, um, the Reverend Judith Meyer. And there are lots of parallels with what you could parallel this exactly to what's going on today. It may not be snow, mud, and illness, but all of there there are lots of barriers to ministry now, both lay ministry and ordained ministry. And there are those who are doing their best to help out, as um, Willenberg had those who helped him. So thank you to all those who help us, who are helping us still continue our ministry during this very challenging time. So let us confess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Give strength to those in our own congregation and loved ones on the front lines. Bettina, Brad, Chris, Christopher, Clark, Grace, Jason and Robert, Jim, Carl, Kate, Michael, Patrick, Robert. Have compassion on those who have asked for our prayers. Dixie, Elizabeth and Joe, David Hatmeister, Sophia, 
Elbow, Ngozi and Joseph, Mike Graves, Helen Byrie, Franz Kutkutabu, Kyle and Beverly, Karen Faye, Wes, Brenna, Lizzie, and the Smith family who have been evacuated from the Mullen Fire in Wyoming. For the continued suffering our country and the world is enduring, including the several members of the Johnson family of St. Luke and the President and First Lady who have contracted COVID-19. For peace among the protesters and rioters and that justice for all can be achieved. Those affected by the wildfires here in California and across the western United States and those persons whom the people now name and look upon your congregation. Give, Give to your, your people, people the, the blessing, blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and, and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never, Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Have mercy on those who have died and those who love them. Francis Luther, Michael Matthews, the families and friends of the more than 200,000 Americans who have lost their lives to COVID-19, including a parishioner's friend, Dawn, and the dozens of wildfire victims, and those persons whom the congregation now names. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Loving God, shepherd of your people, we thank you for the ministry of Henry Melchior Mullenberg, who left his native land to minister where called. Make us mindful of our own vocation to serve where you call us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the Church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever.